Hi everyone, welcome to the Merlin's Magic Workshop. My name is Jeremy and I hope you are doing well for this first video of a new series of tutorials where I will show you my techniques to paint skin tones and faces. And today we are starting with the Space Marine face with white skin and we'll try to aim for an advanced level to obtain something like that. What I mean by advanced level is that we'll try to paint all the little details of the miniature, in particular these volumes created by the muscles and the bones that will give a lot of life and character to the face. It has been complicated to make this video because I don't have the camera to focus on such tiny objects. But I did my best and on top of that, at the end of each step, I will show you comparison pictures before and after so you can better visualize all the work and focus on the little details. And today is also for me the opportunity to talk about my first collaboration with Golden Maple, which create brushes for artists. They are very well known in the world of classical painting, but they also have very interesting range for miniature painters. They sent me a few brushes a couple of months ago and I've been testing them a lot, especially making miniature faces that usually requires high quality material. The brushes are excellent indeed and all the work I will show you today will be made with size 3.0 and 0 of the range Master from Golden Mapper. So if you need to change your brushes and you want to try new quality material, check the link in the description to reach their online store. And if you use the code MERLIN with capital M, you will have 20% discount on all your purchase. If you like this kind of tutorial and if you want to see more and more often, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel and share the video. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Patreon with the links just below. So let's get started. We will have our usual closing discussion at the end. Enjoy the video and see you later. So as I said in the introduction, I'm using brushes from Golden Maple for this project. In particular size 3.0 for most of the job and size 0 for the eyes and the finest details. I have prepared the head with a black undercoat and white paint projected from the top to highlight all the little details. And I fixed that onto a piece of cork to have a good handle. I start by applying the base color of the skin. I'm using Basilisk Red from the Fanatic War Paint range and I cover the entire face, including the interior of the mouth. Using a dark red, almost purple, as a base tone, it will greatly help to give life to the face. It kind of simulates the blood that flows under the skin. I work with very thin layer to preserve as much as possible all the little details. I apply three or four coats until I get an opaque and uniform result. Then I make the foundation for the areas representing closely shaved beard and hair. I make a mix of 50-50 Basilisk Red and Thunderous Blue to get a dark violet slightly desaturated. I apply this mix on the chin, under the nose and the nasal label lines, under the cheeks and on top of the head, trying to draw the natural shape of the scalp. At the moment, while the paint is still wet, it's hard to see the difference with the base color, but the mix will get darker after drying. The idea is to make a clear separation in the shadows between the zone with closely shaved hair and the rest of the skin. There is nothing really complicated at this step, at least technically speaking, but it is important to pay attention of the placement and the shape of the scalp in order to get a realistic representation. And this is the result at the end of this step. The facial hair is now well defined and so we can move on to the next part. Starting from now, I will push the light on the face using a mix of one third basilisk red and two third topaz skin. I will cover most of the forehead, the nose and the top of the cheeks, but without touching the beard and the hair for the moment. I work with very little amount of paint on my brush, just enough to cover small areas with fresh paint. By doing that, I managed to keep the pointy shape of the brush tip to get a maximum control to work on little details. I apply the paint in thin layers, one after the other, trying to keep the consistency of the light orientation. I place a small dot of paint on the side of the eye to create the typical wrinkles that we have there. I then move to the forehead, but leaving the temples darker to show that they are slightly inside of the skull. 
For this tutorial, I choose to place the main source of light in Zenital, but of course it depends on the situation and it should be consistent with the rest of the miniature. If you choose to have an asymmetric or a directional light source, you should take this into consideration already at this stage. And you also need to pay attention to the orientation of the head with respect to the body and to the entire scene, so that all the lights are consistent across the miniature. Then I will invert the color proportions in the mix to get a darker tone to smooth the transition with the base coat. I increase slightly the amount of water in my paint to get the consistency of a fat glaze, so to work with semi-transparent layers to easily blend the two regions. This is what I get after this step. We now better distinguish the general shape of the face. For the next part, I will push the highlight one step further with a mix of one third topaz skin and two third barbarian flesh. Same places as before, but this time reducing the surface to paint. I will also start to draw an interesting volume created by the muscles of the jaw, for now just on the top part next to the ears, but I will extend it later with the highlight color of the beard. With this bright color, I go again over the top part of all the elements I painted before, increasing the contrast and the impression of depth and volume. And I also start to draw some details like the wrinkles on the forehead, nostrils, the ears and the little bumps on the nose. The more we add little volumes and irregularities, the better definition we will get on the face. I now work exclusively with glaze or fat glaze consistency in order to have better control of the amount of paint I apply on the miniature. It's always easier to superimpose semi-transparent layers to build up a shape instead of using thick paint and make mistakes that will be difficult to recover. And then I start to draw those muscles of the jaw, pulling the paint from the jaw to the bottom of the ear. This particular volume is not really existing on the miniature, but I like to add it myself with a paint job to give extra structure and character to the face. It's not complicated to make and it's an extra detail that really adds to the final result. Here we see clearly how the volume on the jaws help to create the impression of power and strength to the overall face. Then I start to work on the highlight of the beard and of the hair regions. 
I use a mix of Basilisk Red, Thunderous Blue and Dorado Skin in equal proportions. I place the light in the upper lip and in the continuity of the nasolabial lines, which are actually these two pieces of skin that connect the nostrils to the sides of the mouth. I am also drawing two points of light on the chin to give the impression of a strong bone structure. Here again, it's not really a feature already present on the sculpture, so I added myself during the paint job. Then I'm continuing working on the volume of the jaws by extending the light towards the interior of the face, always pulling the paint from bottom to top. In some places the transitions are a bit rough, so I make slightly darker mix to blend with the base color. For the top of the head, I use the same recipe, but this time using a sort of stippling technique to create some texture. It's actually exactly the stippling technique, but using paint with a glaze consistency to build up the effect with transparent layers until I get something I like. As I explained before, I use very little amount of paint on my brush to be as precise as possible. The brush hairs will contain some moisture to help the paint stay wet and to keep a nice tip shape. And this is what I get after placing the first highlight for the facial hair regions. After that, I will continue highlighting the skin tone using this time pure barbarian flesh. And I will start to emphasize the roughness of the skin, the wrinkles and the other small volumes I started to draw during previous steps. The barbarian flesh paint has a lot of orange tone in it, which works very well with the darker violet tone of the beard and the hair. It creates a contrast of complementary color as well as a contrast of luminosity and saturation, which makes the face easier to read and more interesting in general. I try to work individually on each little folds, wrinkles and bumps to create a subtle separation between all elements so that we can distinguish all of them even at a distance. At this stage of the painting process, I apply just tiny drops of paint in the right places instead of covering large areas. Actually, there is not enough space anymore to paint the light spots with the layering technique and then create smooth transition around it. So now I paint directly with the glaze consistency and I build up the new spots, layer by layer, by pulling the paint from the dark to the light regions. So in the end, I'm working on the transition at the same time I'm establishing the light spots.
and this is the result after this step. I will then increase again the light on the facial hair regions with the same recipes as before, but this time using more Dorado skin in the mix to get a brighter tone. I'm going really softly, trying not to cover any of the gradient I made before, but just adding a new step to it. I want to keep the level of luminosity I built up so far, so I keep reducing the size of the area to paint without covering the rest. And finally, I will push the light of the skin tone one last time to increase the global contrast. It's the same principle as before, I place tiny dots of light where it's relevant, this time mostly on the upper side of the head. The result I got so far is a bit too desaturated to my taste, so I'm preparing a very diluted mix of Dorado skin and yellow, which I will apply on the forehead and the nose, essentially. It's a very, very thin glaze, just to bring back a bit of saturation, but without messing up with the gradient I created before. And here is what I get after all the shadows and lights are in place. I then move to one of the most important elements, the mouth and the teeth. I'm going to work mostly with a combination of basilisk red and dorado skin. I do the same with the tongue, but with generally darker tones because it is far inside of the mouth and not receiving much light. For the teeth, I go with the same mix, maybe a little bit brighter, and I try to apply little dots instead of a continuous line. This is to represent more or less each tooth individually to give a little bit more interest to the mouth. Then I reinforce the contrast with a lighter mix, still making dots in the same places.
The mouth, when it's done, adds a lot of definition and details to the face, in particular with these tiny teeth. We are now getting to the step that most of the people, including myself, fear the most, the eyes. I won't use pure white, but instead a more natural mix of white with a touch of basilisk red. At that time, I start to use the size 0 brush from Golden Maple, which is finer and has a more pointy tip. Unfortunately, I have no secret trick to share with you to successfully make the eyes. But the idea is to maximize the control you have by putting very little amount of paint and some moisture on the brush to be in the most comfortable position and then do whatever you can not to go beyond the tiny spots of the eyes. In the worst case, it's always possible to go back with the previous paint and start over again and things will get easier with some practice. After adding the black dots of the pupils, I also added an even smaller dot of white in the center to create the reflection of the light source. After that, I'm going to paint the metallic elements around the face using the NMM technique. I already covered this process in great details in my other video, so I won't explain it here, but you will find the links in the description. And with this done, this small painting project is completed and the head is now ready to be fixed onto its miniature. Alright my friends, so the head is now finished. I hope this video will be useful. It took me about one hour and a half to complete this work, but this is consistent with the level of details I was aiming for and also consistent with the time I would have spent on the rest of the miniature. Obviously, there are thousands of other ways to paint miniature faces and even just in the white skin tone family, you can play with different tint variations. You can decide to place your light and your shadows in a different way and to highlight different volumes of the faces. So many options to consider for future painting projects. If you want to get better at painting miniature faces, my suggestion is to practice regularly. You probably have, like me, a lot of Space Marine head sitting on their sprue. So take a few of them, prepare them, and time to time just take one or two hours to test new things and practice a little bit the techniques that I've shown in the video. In the worst case, the result is not great, but you don't care because it was just a spare head. And in the case it was successful, well, you have a new head done for the next painting project. In the next video, I will show you my techniques to paint other skin tones, humans, but not only. And I will try to cover also other specific effects like tattoos and scars. If you don't want to miss it, please consider subscribing to the channel and activate the notification. I will see you soon in a new video tutorial. And in the meantime, I wish you a very nice day.